Traveling, working, and living full-time in my Class B van along with my dog, Willie Nelson. I'm Milo, and this is Milo Talks. I've always enjoyed speaking with Riley and her best friend, Jenna, two first-year college students who helped to remind me how my 20-something self saw the world. Here is our conversation on dreams. So how are you both doing at college? Better. Yeah, it's been very good. Better. No more injuries. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, that's right. Last last time we spoke, there were some hospital visits. Correct. Well, there have been hospital. there have been more hospital visits <laughs> just for non-traumatic reasons. Yeah. <sighs> better reasons. Better reasons. Okay. But we have been good. There's so it's, many. COVID college is a weird time, but I think we're adjusting pretty well, and it is finally warm here in Logan, Utah. So. We've been outside a lot, hammocking and walking around and barefoot, barefoot yeah. around campus. Ooh. People are out with their dogs. Mm-hmm. Is it safe to be barefoot? barefoot? Should you be being barefoot on college campuses? It sounds kind of gross. <laughs> I mean, outside. this is this is like, yeah, not outside. And all the people here are pretty crunchy granola. So... <laughs> <laughs> as opposed as opposed to soggy granola, those soggy granola types are just no good. Oh yeah, no. We don't we don't hang out with the soggy granola. It's just the crunchy ones. Okay. <laughs> How are you? Um I'm good. So we I I've started talking to people about dreams and I thought, well, what who better to who better to ask than two young college students that are just setting out in their life. So do you feel like, first off, do either of you see a difference between a dream and a goal? Yes, I would say so. Personally, I feel like a goal is more achievable. And a dream seems more like wide scale, like, oh, I have this one dream to do with my life. But like, I look at myself and I'm like, oh, yeah, I have goals. But when I have dreams, I'm like, oh, the dreams are going to take a long time to get to compared to like a goal I want to finish next month, you know? Okay. Jenna, how about you? Yeah, I'd say I agree with that. I think goals are probably smaller steps towards dreams. And um, personally, I think a dream is more of a fulfillment, whereas a goal is something you kind of, you already know what to do and how to get there in a way. But a dream is a little bit more abstract. You might not know how to get there. Mm. Mm, I like that. I like that you used abstract. Okay. So let's talk about goals and dreams for you at, you at your age. So you're both under 20. Is that correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right now, give me, Riley, a goal that you have, that you have set in place and set in motion. A goal? Well, a goal that is coming to reality is to go to Uganda on a okay. service trip and i actually was just accepted into a program today to go to uganda <laughs> so okay so you're gonna time. celebrate with some fried chicken later i hope oh or something. yes I don't absolutely know. <laughs> but yeah the goal was to go to africa on like a service trip and just to get my foot in the door and see that was something i wanted to do with my life and so that mm-hmm. seems like small and more achievable as opposed to like Oh, I'm going to pack up all my things and move to Africa. So that's something that's in the works right now. (laughs) Okay. So, Jenna, tell me a goal that you have. Hmm. (laughs) Good question. Um, I think I, I have a direction with my life. I know I really enjoy science and I enjoy conservation. So a goal coming up for me in the next year or two is to get involved on like a research team at school Mm -hmm. in something that I am passionate about. So that's not, that's not too difficult where we go to school. It's very undergraduate focused. So. Mm. uh, Okay. Jenna, give me a, give me a dream, a dream. I, (laughs) I would love to study in Northern Europe. I think Iceland, I'd love to spend some time in Iceland um, doing science work. However that looks. So interesting. Okay, that's that you consider that a dream. When that, why is that not a goal? That is completely. It's completely. (laughs) Okay. Oh, because you don't you don't really know the steps how to do that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Riley, give me a dream. 
So mine's kind of similar. Mine was to go to school in Iceland. We both kind of came yeah. up with this. Can you tell we're best friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mine's kind of similar. Like, I don't, I just can't see myself getting there, at least at this point in life. It just seems more abstract. Like, Iceland just seems so far away. And I'm also at this stage of life when, I don't know, I'm still figuring things out and I can still like barely keep myself afloat in my little college dorm day to day. So moving to Iceland and studying there and meeting new people is like, yeah. whoa, it just seems so much bigger, you and know, being on your own. Like, yeah, we not we don't know how to do that. Exactly. Yet. We're still learning how to be on our own and like two hours <laughs> away from our parents. So being, you know, across the world, basically, is scary. Scary. Yeah. I mean, but your dreams seem to revolve around foreign countries and education. Mm. <laughs> what about that's kind of our world right now is education. But, but what about beyond that? Oh. What 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 happens at what dream do you have after education? Do you can you dream past age 25? Yes. So one of I guess more of a fun dream would be to climb Kilimanjaro. Mm, okay my father (laughs) (laughs) does does your dad want to be a part of that dream yes my my dad actually inspired that dream because you know you know my dad i think he's been on this podcast before but he he's a mountain climber and he we wanted to climb kilimanjaro um with like a group of people and then like raise profits to for like an orphanage and do it for a purpose like climb kilimanjaro but like with a with a goal with a goal in mind to like give it back to somebody else in Africa like yeah but so that's more of like and see that even seems more realistic in my mind than moving to Iceland <laughs> okay Jenna give me a goal past the age 25 oh boy I don't know if I can even imagine myself passing <laughs> I plan to be past the age 25 but I sure hope so I, wow yeah. <laughs> um Hmm. Oh, you really? Okay. So here's what's so interesting. So I, I would imagine that when I was, I, I mean, I guarantee my first, when I went to college, first off, I was a communications major, meaning I wanted to do radio and television. And I envisioned myself like in the, you know, in the world of TV and film, and, you know, possibly, re- I didn't feel I had the voice for radio, which is so funny because that's and now pretty much all I do. Right. It's so funny. <laughs> I didn't think I had the voice for it at all. I didn't like my voice, but my voice changed um, as I got older. But uh, I feel that at your age, I had like crazy dreams, like so many. I was so hopeful. Do you feel that you are, do you feel like your dreamers are goal setters? Hmm. Ooh. That is a good question. Um, that is a great question. I think, I don't know if I call myself either, partly because I'm just not sure I'm confident in my definition of either, but I do Mm. think I'm hopeful. I think, um, I'm confident that things are going to line up the right way and that like, I don't know, almost like it's in God's hand, God's hand, you know, there's, I don't know what I don't know yet, and I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the future. I, but I do know that things are going to come up that I wouldn't have imagined that I'd fall in love with. I don't know if that is a satisfying answer, but no. So what's interesting is that you're kind of walking through life, getting giving up the outcome. Yeah. Like you are <laughs> trusting, you are trusting the fact that things will fall where they're supposed to. You just keep walking a, a path that you feel is right and righteous by your words, I'm sure. But, uh, and that things will work out the way they are supposed to. And you don't want to interfere by overthinking it. You're just doing it. You're just going to go. So you're not really setting your sail. I I love using ships as metaphors. So you are each in your own ship. Like right now you're tethered together like you, but you're each in your own little sailboat. Okay. You got your little sailboats. You're not far from shore. You can see your other your parents' sailboats right over there on the horizon, two hours away, right? Yeah. You can still see your fa- your family sails, but understand everyone's in their own sailboat. 
So you two are tethered. You've got your ropes. You're connected. You're kind of sailing together. But each of you have to steer at some point to put point your sailboat in a direction. Are you with me so far? Yes. So are you both telling me, and I don't, that you are allowing the wind to navigate you and you are not trying to set a course? Or you're kind of setting a course, but you're okay if the winds blow you off course? <laughs> I, probably the latter. I think I'm looking for islands to visit. And if an Ooh, island like comes that. up, I will consider it. <laughs> you're, you would... You would actually go into the marina and, like, tie yourself off and visit the island for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. right. Riley? I really like that analogy. I would say more so for me, I have a direction that I know I want to go in. Like, my boat is going towards a vague, distant island. But if things come along the way, like, little islands pop up or little sailboats cross my path, then I'm not <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you threw another sailboat in there because that's absolutely true. Like everyone we meet is their own, in their own vessel. Exactly. Right? And I think yeah. that's become like that's something I've learned since coming to college is that I really can't control everything that happens to me. Like I was supposed to come up to college last semester and I was supposed to like start up at Utah State in August. But a lot of things happened that were out of my control and I ended up staying home for a semester. And that kind of threw all of my like goals off and that threw like my perspective of my future off a little bit, even though it was such like a small setback, it just, it threw me off. And so it felt huge at the time because it was, it was the first of its kind, right? It was a huge, like you had, you saw yourself going to these events and going to school and getting into a dorm room and moving from the house. And then everything changed and you're still at the house, you're still with your siblings, you're still helping your parents, and you're going to school exactly. <laughs> online. Yeah. And so so it no, was just, I, it was this total change of pace because I was so prepared to be on my own and like sail on my own little sailboat and have my parents took their sailboat and their rope and they tethered me back in. They're like, you're not leaving the shore yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, and you were, I know you were ready to go, but it also gave you a little bit more time to re- you know, to pack more things into your ship and to make sure you had everything you needed and shore up your lines. Boy, this is this analogy is really going. I, I know, I really. Love um, it. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess while you're at college, I would just, I would say, uh, I mean, I I was a huge dreamer. I mean, I'm 50 and I'm still dreaming. Yeah. Like my sailboat has wheels. Right? It does indeed. And it does, it does. And but I am but now as I am literally getting to set course to different destinations with my lifestyle, right? The way that I live. And I can change, I can tie off. Like right now I'm tethered in Biloxi, Mississippi because, you know, my dog needs some some uh, vet care. So we're going to be here for a bit while we're getting that taken care of, but in the meantime, I can venture, so we could talk about sailing to adventures, but as far as those are just physical things, like I can go here and you can go to Iceland and you can go to Uganda. Those are physical places we can actually get to. There's nothing saying you can't buy a plane ticket this summer and go to Iceland. Correct. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, From it's... Bank accounts, but you know. <laughs> sure, but I mean, save... Every, but I'm saying it's completely, that is completely, but when we talk about like bigger than just driving or flying someplace or taking your sailboat someplace. Yeah. Like reaching something, like you said, like somewhat that that was beyond like where you even think you can get there. Like you can't even navigate that. Iceland, I can navigate. I buy a plane ticket. I get a passport. I find an Airbnb. I go to Iceland, right? That is point by point. I know how to get to Iceland. Correct. Yeah. You did everything you needed to get to Uganda. You now know the steps you had to take to make this happen to, so those are that's how you you plan and plot for goals. But when you have a dream, like I want to be an NPR, you know, uh, contributor. Like I want them to pick up Milo Talks and go, she's great. The whole world needs to listen to her, and they're going to syndicate me all over the world. Right <laughs> now, that's that is an enormous dream. Does it change my life if I don't get it? Absolutely not. But mm-hmm. 
I think dreams help us stay on a course. Because what if I didn't have that dream? Then why would I be doing it? So then why the podcast? So I guess that's my question. And if you don't have the dream, then why do you do anything? Why would you continue going to school or getting an education in something if you don't have a big dream of something? Don't you need, don't you feel like you, don't you both feel like you need something bigger than just a, a trip to Island? A, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. And I think that I did, like, I would consider myself a dreamer. And at the beginning of this year, I set some pretty big, ambitious goals, but it was all with like a dream in mind. And I guess the dream was just to like become either like a midwife or a nurse practitioner and like serve abroad and do like medical humanitarian work. Like that was like, that was like a dream. Like that is a dream. That is a dream. Not great. But again, (laughs) you can still get there. Like you take the classes, you can help save lives, make lives, right? Create, you know, bring life (laughs) into this world. That's it's right it's, that that's the dream yeah. actually is to bring new life into this world and save lives in the process okay <laughs> but there's you know there's more to it but you know that is a good question because i think i don't know i don't know what jenna has to say with this i'll let her speak on it too but when you get to college and there's so much going on there's like oh you should be doing this research like you have to do this to finish your major or like right. join this club and grades and scholarships it all just seems like you just have to get to the point when you're graduating and you can just have your degree and so the dream kind of fades to just things that you have to do mm-hmm. like you're just doing it because you should mm-hmm. as opposed to like i don't know i'm doing this because like you you do it because you want to accomplish something but things just kind of pile up and you just kind of doing it for the purpose of finishing your school. You have a checklist. You go to college you get, and you get a checklist. You're like, I, you need this, this, right, and exactly. this. And so like, you're so you go busy. You with a dream and then you get a checklist. Yeah. So you're so <laughs> busy you with your checklist, you can't stuff. even think about your dream kind of sits in the background waiting for you exactly. because you have the to get through this on the checklist. back burner because you got to think about all the scholarship stuff and all of the classes and all of the deadlines and the social life and the adjusting to living on your own. And, you know, it's a little different because, you know, we're freshmen this year and we're still figuring things out. And also we, we go to Zoom University. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> oh, you mean you go online? I didn't I didn't get that. Yeah. You laughed at a joke yeah. that only the team you understood. <laughs> no, not actually. Uh, yeah. Jenna, what do you have to say on it? Big dreams. I think that's really interesting because I, I agree in part. I think it is um, it is discouraging coming and then like now you have to be focused on the small scale details, like finishing a class or like, oh no, like I'm going to fail stats and I probably am going to fail stats. So what do I do from here? Like that's important to get where I want to go. And so you kind of have to focus on those little things that like, you know, there, there are failures along the way, but I think the dream, like more than sitting on the back burner is like, that's the motivation. Like Mm. if you, it's, it's hard to get through this if you don't have, a reason and I think for I don't know I think the dream is the reason and I think that's what needs to motivate you to take stats so it makes (laughs) you want to do the checklist it keeps you in school even with the failures it keeps you going because you're still you're still steering your vessel towards that big dream so I guess the other thing I just want to point out to the boat to both of you is like the checklist that college gives you now the checklist never go away the checklist stays So I almost wish that there was a way to just make the checklist so much smaller than the dream. So the dream stays big and present and alive and the tasks of that checklist diminish and seem um, less encompassing. Like right now, that's all you guys are thinking about, right? Because after college, the next chest, the next checklists that you'll receive are, you know, the continued car insurance, job, housing, everything that you that college takes care of, right? For now, shifts into a different form of checklist. It's it's so if you can manage to hold that dream in the focus um, and not let the checklist become um it's so so important um 
I don't know if that's making much sense, but I think we get lost in the day to day grind of life that we just kind of we we lose sight of the dream. And because what's what's interesting is it took Riley, it took you a bit to actually say what your dream was when I knew at the beginning of the conversation what your dream was because we talked about it. <laughs> but I'm like, wait, she's not saying it. <laughs> so. Um, but you have been, you, it, it kind of gets pushed to the background, right? Because of all the busy work and all the other things. But the thing is you want to save and bring life into this planet. That's what you've been wanting to do for a long time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this the other day. Yeah. And I, it does get pushed. It does get pushed back. And that is the dream. And I think like when I remember that that's what I want to do and I like, remember my motivations and I just like imagine myself in the future, like everything falls into place. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm not just here for the checklist. I'm not just here to take these classes. Like the classes are just steps along the way to get to where I'm going. And you know, if I ended up switching schools or going to a different country, like the dream would still be the same. Right. 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 And you might find a different way to get there, but exactly, yeah. you know, it's There's on the horizon, like heading different. towards that horizon. You may see a different path, you know, but you've got it, but you're still heading in that direction. Right. Um, exactly. Jenny, I really like else? the ship analogy. It puts it in oh, the, yeah. <laughs> the perspective is better. That's what we are. <laughs> we are. We're just, we're just little yeah. college sailboats. Yeah. Well, to put it even just to even kind of dive into a little bit more of kind of how I envision this is now my own psyche, but I don't, the sailboat was a luxury. I usually just think of us all in rafts. Like we're lucky to even have a sail in some cases. We're just bumping around, hanging on for dear life when waves and currents take us away. We're just literally floating around and every once in a while, Someone else floats near us and we can tie off like your parents tied to each other. And then they had you and they gave you your own little sailboat, but they are your little raft and they tied you tightly to them and they watched and monitored and protected you and kept you. And then they let that that rope go a little bit more and you go out a little bit further. But sometimes they really back in. And I'm sure you both feel it when your parents pull you back in tight to the the pod of boats, right? The little rafts that you're all together. But um and then when you're in school, all those bumpers, all of you guys bump it into each other, your little, your little floaties. And you're all just, <laughs> you know, you could but never forget you are responsible for your own flotation device. So if you spring a leak or you're taking on water or you're sinking, you have to maintain your vessel, right, at all costs. Yeah. Um. So if you take on damage or anything, you must maintain your vessel. So you can't take on other people and you can never bring someone else into your vessel. You can like the idea. You can let them tether on to you, but they can't come into your vessel because it's impossible. It's a vessel made for one. We're all just surviving in our little rubber tubes. And sometimes we catch a breeze or a current and it puts us in a very interesting path. But we never... But we never really see what's on the other side of the horizon until we're there. Mm -hmm. and that's that's why it's it's all just a journey. And I think that the journey is a lot more smooth when you are willing to be pushed by the wind mm. instead of going against okay. it. Sure. There's a way. I mean, you can drop your sail and motor. It's true. <laughs> it's true. And, some, and sometimes you need to do there. that because sometimes the current's yeah, pushing you the sometimes. wrong way. You don't, you can't afford a motor, get out that yeah, little oar, exactly. start, you know, the man power. just do get the work. To come it takes, help push you. <laughs> or pull, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess you could do that. So, well, um, I hope this has given you guys some things to think about. Um, I would say dream big, because that's why they call them dreams, <laughs> right? They don't say go, go big, <laughs> go bigger, go bigger, go home. <laughs> They don't, right? Set those goals. No, they say dream big. <laughs> so dream big, dream past Jenna, dream past the age of 25. <laughs> Thank you. I will cry. You, okay. I want you to think big. Like, where are you going to, what would you like to be doing when you're my age at 50 years old? What are you going to be doing? What's your life look like? Are you going to, you know, you be writing books? What are you going to be doing? Exactly what so, you're doing right now. I want to be in a van, having a podcast, <laughs> talking about life and adventures i talk yeah. about it all the time so i hope you the, know that 
to everyone. To oh, everyone. No, and, I... and, and like everyone on campus knows Milo now. I'm like, oh, my friend Milo, who lives in her van and travels and interviews people on her podcast. And they're like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, she's basically my aunt. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am I am every bit your aunt outside of being actually blood related to you. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> um all right. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time and sharing yourselves with me. And I look forward to the next time we can oh, chat. Yes. Thank you for your wisdom. Yes. I, mean, I think of everything that happens to me oh. in the respect to boats now. <laughs> <laughs> and always learn to swim. Just okay. oh, yes, <laughs> Thanks, Milo. Love you. Thank you. Love you. I just had a conversation with a friend who said we were raised in a time when we were told we could do anything we wanted. Dream big, achieve big. I would like to think we tend to dream inside of our own abilities because when something comes natural, it tends to be more fun. And then in those moments, we can see our greatness or see what's possible. I played soccer in high school and for a minute in college, but I knew I was actually not very good at it. I enjoyed being a part of the team and the fellowship that came with that belonging, but I had no big dreams regarding soccer. Theater, I loved and I did have big dreams until I got to college and realized, again, I was actually no good at that either. (laughs) I could have gotten better and kept that dream alive, but in my case, something new and shiny caught my eye, so I went in a different direction. My point is, what is my point? My point is, I like dreamers, and I think all dreamers need the opportunity to try. I had those opportunities. I was fortunate. I am fortunate. I hope you get the opportunity to try your dreams, and if it happens, I want to know about it. Now go dream. Thank you for listening to Milo Talks. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Milo Talks or email me at milotalksstrangers at gmail.com.